What's up everyone, Feedy here here, and welcome to today's video, where we'll be looking into two perks that are underused and not heard much about, which are Grenade Launcher's Blinding Rounds and Concussion Round perks. What I want to go over is the general reasoning as to why these two perks aren't overly used by the general players, how to improve them via buffing them, comparing the two to see which are better, and going in as much depth as possible to see how they affect the following weapon stats. Both perks are available on the single fire grenade launchers, which can be either on the Energy, Flash and Thunder, Oring's Mar or Truth Teller, while Kinetic also gets a malicious birthright for the two perks. The Wendigo Heavy Grenade can also get blind rounds as well, but we will be focused on the single firing variants only. For testing purposes, I'll be using Oring's Mar and the malicious birthright, and we'll be testing the effectiveness in both PvE and PvP. Single fire grenade launchers are a risky but rewarding weapon category in game, as it allows you to dispatch large to small groups of enemies within a large blast area. As of now, you may have heard of the popular mountain top grenade launcher and the path you have to take to get it, with weapons such as Fighting Lion, Orgs Mile, and Malicious Birthright becoming the go to launchers for this sought after weapon. But from paying attention to the quest, many people opt into using proximity or spike grenades to complete the quest, and in general, PvE content. You won't be seeing blinding or concussion rounds be used as an alternative. In fact, not a lot of people talk about blinding or concussion rounds to the point of them actually existing. Now, both are situational and require a very skilled user to fully understand how to make the weapon play within their favour. And let me tell you, using these two perks in PvP is extremely tough with the common meta occurring. And as such, which is why for the viewer's sake I won't show you clips of me using it in PvP, as it was just too infuriating to land most of the clips for it. But maybe I'll show you another time. Anyways, Blinding Grenade perk states that once detonated within the vicinity of the enemy, it will blind them for a short duration, which is around 3 seconds. However, it will severely reduce your blast radius from 55 to 5, which is minus 50 decrease in radius, and is incredibly low for any grenade launcher in general to beat these any sort of levels. Now, Concussion Rounds are the same as Blinding Rounds, which it severely reduces your blast damage down to 5, but provides a staggering debuff to those they hit such as a brief hit to your recoil direction, limited movement, and messes around with your UI. The advantages to using single fire grenade launchers are that they are fast to fire, can be used to fire and forget, have the option to remote detonate where the user wants, fast to reload, and high velocity speed, which pairs well with a weapon that can be drawn out very quickly, aka any weapon like that has quick draw or a hand cannon, or even a sidearm in general. Now, the downside to this though is that you only get one shot before you have to reload for the next one, which isn't a problem if you have auto load holster or a higher reload speed for your weapon, or even if you're using a PvE content, it's not much of a problem. But you do also have to cater in the blast radius as well, where using concussion or blinding rounds will put you at a very large disadvantage. What we need to understand with most grenade launchers is that they require only one direct shot on most enemies to one shot kill them and generally anyone else around them, but this can vary depending on the enemy type you face, and the type of explosive round you use, which in our case is the blinding rounds and concussion. Now, blinding rounds are ideal for PvE content and crowd control, as it could benefit the user who may be overrun by ads, or just need to troll the fight within their favour. Even though its blast radius from the perk is incredibly small, and then further on, in PvP, it can help with locking down areas or main objective points to allow your team to move up, for example, it's, it's still effective from what I played with. Concussion rounds are the same and act just like blinding rounds in PvE. However, from paying closer attention to them, once detonated, they seem to have a much better usage in PvP, with a whole lot of bonuses that many people sleep on, but only if they connect. For example, they disorient the user via messing up your UI. They mess with your aim by making it aim elsewhere, as if you've been tethered by a hunter for example, or tethered in general. And it also halts your movement for the user for a limited time, which I believe is around 2-3 to three seconds. Concussion rounds are like the ideal part for PvE and PvP, with its effects limiting movements, while blinding is more for PvE and great for dispersing crowds but does have his fair share of use in PvP as well, so both perks are 50-50 in terms of usage. What we need to look at more is the blast radius as a whole, from damage and overall reuse in PvE and PvP, as this is the key area as to why the two perks are overlooked by most players, and why most players rather opt in to using proximity or spite 
compared to using concussion or blinding rounds. Now, this affects the weapon in many ways, with for starters, it reduces your kill radius for the grenade once it detonates. Both grenade types, if they land or detonate directly at a player, it will do around a total of 150 damage, which can either kill them outright, or leave only a bit of health for left, to the point of where you can literally punch them, or you can literally just use your secondary weapon to finish them off with just one round. While PvE damage seems to vary, with numbers going all over the place, and not really being a fixed number at times, from some of my testing I've done. For example, with minor major enemies, they take around 200, 3000 to 10k, while higher tiered and named bosses take around 10 to 11k ish damage. It, it, there's not really a set number for most of them. It seems to fluctuate, depending, and I, I don't know the reasoning as to why. I don't know if it's because of the direct damage and then the secondary blast radius out of it. So it's two different damage numbers, or whether it's because there's not really a set value, it's only a set value between two parameters, so from, say for example, from 200 being the lowest, and then 10k being the highest. I'm, I'm not sure and I'm still looking into this. As you can see now, using them against miners and majors are ideal for clearing up and controlling fights, but against bosses is a big no-go, as the damage output, although high, it isn't enough to make a major damage in their health. Unless you use empowering rifts or any sort of deepers that can further help with damage, in all honesty, if you want more damage, you're best going for spike grenades or even proximity at best. Also to note, the perks become useless against the bigger name bosses and most ultras as well, as it doesn't affect them the same way it does to minors and majors with either blinding them or limiting their movements. This overall reduces the effectiveness of the round by further limiting down to only a select few of enemy types. And also, with the low blast damage tied into them, it makes it so you're only tackling two enemy groups. Because the perks are tied into the blast radius of your round, you will need to either be touching the enemy via directly within a 1 to 2.5 meters for the damage to connect, and the perk ability to detonate within effectiveness. Although damage is quite fair, this still puts you at a disadvantage where your shots need to be close for the effects to bloom. But at the same time, we do also have the option to remote detonate the rounds, which allows us to gauge how close exactly our rounds need to be for them to be fully effective. Single fire grenades are meant to be used as an engagement weapon to set the scenario. So the moment you first engage with someone, your first fire one round or a few rounds to hit your target until you hit them, and then switch to a much harder hitting weapon that can finish them before they get a chance to cover. When paired up well with a weapon that synchronizes with it, you can get a better understanding as to why and how to make full use of your surroundings with the two. And once you fully master it, it becomes a very powerful combination for shutting down singular to large groups. This is most likely the reason for my own mindset as to why people don't give the perks a go in Crucible or PvP because of the required skill behind mastering them and the fact many players only rely on weapons that are faster to pull out and are easily there and then, like shotguns or snipers or SMG, fusions, etc. Anything that is consistent and reliable and won't fail you. So how could we improve them to make them more reliable and usable by players? To be quite honest, there's not a lot of ways to increase it because of the way the weapon perks are designed. Firstly, Increasing the blast radius by an extra plus 3 to 5 will at least give the perk a boost by a few more meters, as it requires 1 to 2.5 meters for the perk once detonated to at least affect those within its vicinity. A slightly increase the weapon's radius a bit more will allow the user to at least have the effect work slightly better. Even if the perk isn't full on hit, it won't break the perk, and it won't make it OP, as they still have to detonate the round manually and have to at least still get the round to connect before seizing the opportunity. But with a slight increase, it can still give the weapon and the user a chance to fight back at least. Secondly, increasing the reload speed as a secondary sync trick for using the perk can also help with making it more useful and not leaving you out in the open. Boosting its reload speed to the same levels of Outlaw, for example, would help it for allowing the user to spam fire the weapon as a sort of nimble secondary with low blast radius aiding it. They won't be able to lock down areas, but it can help with putting a stop to those. I want to progress. They could also add in the ability for the perk to where it automatically detonates over a certain distance, where from 5 meters it auto detonates, while from 10 plus you need to manually detonate. 
this should in some way still require some skill for the user. And then thirdly, they could just simply make the pearl effects last longer. As a comment, they last around 2 to 3 seconds, so extending them by an extra 1 second would benefit the pearl as a whole, as it would still reward those with good aim and allow them to take the kill, as rightfully so. My final thoughts on the perks are that they are both strong within effective areas, with blinding grenades being great for crowd control and concussion being great for locking down players' movements. However, they lack any sort of usage in both PvE and PvP to date, because of the changing meta, and also because of spike grenades plus proximity grenades being the more favoured around blast damage. By looking at these areas of the perks that make them great, and also lacking in, we can get a better understanding in terms of where they struggle and where they can be further improved on. Ideally, improving their usages for PvE would help them a lot, as the perks feel more at home against AI enemies, compared to actual players. Hopefully, they will get a buff in the near future to further improve their usage, and make the single fire grenade launchers have more choice. So that comes to the end of the video, I do hope you enjoyed it. Now if you enjoyed the video, then by all means please leave a like, a sub, and share the videos with others. And also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with even more Destiny content. The link is down below. But once again guys, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.